thank God for this another extraordinary opportunity to come before my new millennial family and share just a preview of what God has placed on my heart. Um, I also want to thank Pastor Griffin for uh, his guidance and his um, support and helping me transition into ministry in the way that I am. And uh, this is a new experience for me, and I'm glad that you all are on the journey with me to make this transition successful. Amen. Amen. Uh, because this has been a long time coming. Amen. Amen. And I thank God for uh, being on this path with you all today. I'm going to ask that we do something in keeping with our tradition and that we go to God in prayer before I begin uh, the message for this morning. God of wisdom, God of counsel, God of creation, we ask that you would be with us this morning as we look back over the years of, of our lives and over the millenniums of your creation to rediscover our purpose by design and to come to understand how that connects us to you, to nature, and to each other. I pray, O oh God, that you will now allow for the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Amen. So according to the, uh, the bulletin and also according uh, to the scripture that we have read together, uh, the title of this particular sermon is called The Gospel of the Hummingbird. And this is a sermon that basically tries to take the life of a hummingbird and see how we can find inspiration from the life of a hummingbird on how to live our own lives. And I, I found it to be very instructive to uh, take us back to Genesis, the first chapter, because this is a story that is parallel to the story of creation yeah. and why we find ourselves even existing on this planet, even existing in this galaxy, is because God designed it as such. And so as God being the architect, uh, of our planet. I found that it would be very, very in instructive for us to go back to the story that describes, that tries to show us how God was very intentional about how he designed this earth and also the universe. And so I found it befitting to take us to Genesis, uh, the first chapter. And you would note that according to the scripture, I did not include the entire chapter because it would include all of the particular aspects of creation, which are very important, but not necessarily necessary for uh, this particular sermon this morning. And so I decided to stop at verse 21, where God is just now finishing the part of creation where now birds are now flying in the earth. And I found it to be fitting because it connects us now to the story of the hummingbird, who was a part of the evolutionary process, and how God created the birds along with and alongside of the hummingbird. And so I just wanted to read uh, verse 20 for our remembrance this morning, because this is the subject of our uh, sermon. Chapter 1, verse 20. Then God said, let the water swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that scurries and swarms in the water and every sort of bird, each producing offspring of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. And so the reason that the hummingbird, being one of these many birds, was chosen from God's creation to be an example for our lives today is because the hummingbird is one of the most unique 
and most extraordinary creatures that God ever created. And the reason it is unique is because of its size, but also because of its ability. And it allows for us to see that size really don't matter. And it also allows for us to see that no matter how you are designed, your design can be used by God to give you extraordinary abilities. But you have to be placed in the right environment to understand why your size matters and how your abilities can be used. Are y'all with me? If I take a child and I place a child in an adult classroom and tell the child to sit in the adult chair and face the adult board, the child may be able to visually comprehend what's going on in the classroom from an adult perspective. But what happens when I change the environment of the classroom and I allow for the child to have child-sized chairs and child-sized tables and a board that's comfortable to look at from a child's point of view, then the lesson that the child learns in that classroom is taking in in a, dirt, a different way. Are y'all with me? So the size does matter. But when the size is placed in its perfect environment, the size now creates a different ability. Are y'all with me? And so now we're looking at the life for this particular me uh, message of the hummingbird and how its size matters based on its environment that God has placed it in. And how from that the hummingbird is able to achieve what we would think would be humanly impossible. So let's talk about the size of the hummingbird quickly. The hummingbird is about three and a half inches, meaning that it can fit in the palm of your hand. And it weighs about one pound or less, right? And so this small creature has the capacity to do what humans cannot do with this small size. For instance, a hummingbird can travel 500 miles, being this size, in 18 hours. Can you do that? <laughs> Look how big you are. What's happened to your design? But you can get on an airplane that's modeled after a bird and put on machines attached to the airplane called engines, right? And fly the same distance in less time. All right. So by design, we're incapable of certain things, but by technology, we become capable of certain things. So what God has done in nature, by design, animals are able to do naturally what we can't do naturally. Are y'all with me? So then let's talk a little bit about how the size matters in the context of the hummingbird and how that inspires us to see this in the context of the gospel message. Walk with me slowly as I take you through the life of the hummingbird. The first thing that I want to establish is that Genesis, the first chapter, is a chapter about evolution. God's evolution, not Darwin's evolution, God's evolution. All right. And it shows you how God set up the earth, set up creation in such a way that he designed everything based on its specific kind to now partner with other things based on the same kind in nature. Are y'all with me? And so the how was the hummingbird ever, ever able to be created to be the species that it is today is because of evolution. So if you look at your program, you will see this three and a half inch bird, right? And this long beak coming out from the front part of the bird that's very thin and narrow. And you will see its wings rotating on the side. This is captured by a high powered camera that's able to catch speeds very quickly, right? And so this design happened over 50 million years, okay? God's evolution. So why was the hummingbird design like this? Why was this size made to be this? Well, you have to look at its environment. The hummingbird feeds off of plants that have nectar that comes from the plant that now gives food and nourishment to the hummingbird. And so its beak is created like this so it can stick its beak up the plant's blossom that's hanging down, and extract from the plant sugar, what we call, we call sugar, but really nectar, right. to feed off of in order to supply energy for its body 
nourishment for his body, but also nourishment for its children. Okay, are y'all with me? Now, how did this design happen? Well, scientists have already proven that during evolution, God's evolution, the hummingbird actually was like every other bird. It flapped its wings to do what? To take off, right? You ever see birds do this and they, they take off and they glide like this, right? And then when they want to swoop, they close their wings and they die. The hummingbird did the, th the same thing. However, the plant wanted to evolve and to grow and to reproduce. But it was not able to get the insects that were feeding off the plant able to now help it pollinate. Anybody heard about pollination, the birds and the bees? Right. To take its offspring, its seeds, and plant them in other soil to grow more plants of its own kind. Right. So the hummingbird was designed by God and by nature. The plant and the hummingbird united in their evolutionary process. They co-evolved together. Right. They partnered together. So when the plant realized that it needed to bloom in a certain way to protect itself from its predators, it needed to bloom in such a way that only the hummingbird was a species that was created by God that was able to access the plant in order to help it pollinate. Are y'all with me? So the beak of the plant is the length of the, of the flower. The beak of the hummingbird is the length of the flower that comes from the tree that it's feeding from so it can stick its beak up the tree to extract the nectar and to pollinate, get the pollen on itself, and then when it goes to another tree, it cross-pollinates. Are y'all with me? Yep. Now, let me, let me help you understand something about the hummingbird. Every hummingbird has a different size beak, meaning that the beak is designed based on the plant that it feeds from. So you can go to certain parts of the country and uh, certain parts of South America, and you'll find a beak that's two inches long, one inch long. You'll find beaks that are curved. You'll find beaks that are hooked. You'll find beaks that are straight. Because when you look at the plant that the hummingbird feeds from, it either has a bloom that's crooked, a bloom that's straight, a bloom that is short, or a bloom that's long. For instance, there's one hummingbird in South America whose beak is four inches long. How long is the body of a hummingbird? Three and a half inches, right? Its beak is four inches long, why? because it evolved with a plant that it feeds from where the bloom is four inches long. So how is the hummingbird able to feed off of plants that it needs food from and the plants able to pollinate and grow is because God designed them together. All right. Okay, now watch this, I'm going into the gospel very quickly, right? So how do we as Christians grow in our spiritual journey? This is the gospel according to the hummingbird, right? God has to partner us up with people who don't perfectly fit who we are. Yeah. And we have to evolve with them yeah. to create a, a balanced relationship so that they can feed off of us and we can feed off of them. Yeah. So they can produce off of us and we can produce off of them. Are y'all with me? Yeah. So in order to do this, you have to be willing to give up a little bit of your selfishness All right. to grow with someone else. Are y'all with me? Yeah. You have to be willing to be straight when the person needs someone who's straight. You have to be willing to be curved when the person needs somebody who's curved. All right. You have to be willing to be short. I'm just talking about the hummingbird. When the person needs someone to be short, you have to be willing to adapt to the needs of the person you're in relationship with. Are y'all with me? Right. So when you come into a relationship, you say, I know who I am. This is the way I've been for 15 years. Ain't nobody going to change me. I don't care what you say. God, when God made me, he broke the mold. <laughs> mm -hmm. But what does the hummingbird say about this? The hummingbird says you have to be willing to adapt to the relationship God places you in because remaining who you are may sabotage the person's life and your own life. So for the hummingbird to survive as a species and for the plant to survive as a species, they had to learn to grow together. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. So in growing together, the hummingbird realized, I have to give up something. I have to give up my wing ability to fly like other birds so I can eat from the nectar of the plants that God has designed for me to be in partnership with. The plants had to give up something. 
They had to change their size and their color to be able to move to certain parts of the branch that they were away from their predator insects to now reserve who they are as plants only for the hummingbird themselves. Are y'all with me? This is like when a, when a child is told, you have to, you're grown now, you have to evolve and adapt, you have to leave this household, you have to give up your codependency on me to be able to move into your own house to learn how to live independent. So who you were before, when you were a child in my house is going to be now something different as an adult in your own house. Are y'all with me? Adaptation, evolving, right? So now the gospel, according to the Humber, teaches us that who we are changes based on our environment. Now, let me give you the success story of this adaptation process. The hummingbird allows for over 8,000 plants, species, to evolve and to continue to grow throughout the world. 8,000 plants today depend on the hummingbird for its procreation. 8,000. Y'all thought the bees were bad, right? These creatures. 8,000. Plants where we get our food from, plants where we get our sugar from, plants where we get our medicinal uh, healing from. Are y'all with me? Yeah. So we are just as dependent on the hummingbird as the plants are, and we're dependent on them because of their adaptation. Yeah. Now here's where it gets back into the gospel. There are people in the community who depend on you for what you offer them from the standpoint of nourishment and healing and opportunities to change and to adapt to their environments. But in order to do that, you have to be willing to adapt as well. So the hummingbird gave up its flight ability. And the hummingbird also gave up its ability to stand on its own two feet. Because the hummingbird now, its feet are so small, it can only perch on the branch long enough to feed its children or to consume more food. But it cannot stand and walk like most birds, right? So what does that teach us? The hummingbird also was able to adapt its beak ability, but it also was able to adapt its flying ability because now it has to remain in flight most of its life. Now we all talk that, talk that we walk by faith, right? Yeah. Did you know to walk by faith, we're back in the Gospels, right? To walk by faith and not by sight is not to depend on your natural abilities. Yeah. So when we begin to engage in a relationship with God, God has to change us to adapt us to being able to walk not by our own two feet, but to change us where we remain in flight. So that we'll never be comfortable landing on one place and saying, I got it now, God. I don't need your help anymore. I am secure. God has made it so that our faith walk will always be that the minute we find ourselves thinking that we have stability because of how we've been designed, God lets us fall over because we can't stand by ourselves. And the only way to find equilibrium is to take flight again, right? Are y'all with me? Still talking about the hummingbird, right? So then to live by faith is to live without being able to stay on the ground and support yourself by yourself, okay? So the hummingbird gave up his feet to fly, to reach the nectar. Now, if you know something about hummingbirds and trees, the reason it's able to, I'm glad uh, they hooked me up on the program, right? <laughs> the reason it's able to acquire sugar water from these bird feeders, feeders is because and it doesn't have to worry about other birds because the difference between a hummingbird and other birds is that other birds can't hover. Yeah. Okay? Watch this now. We're still talking about faith. So the hummingbird, when it's flying, is able to stand in one position that you can see it standing in, right. flying in, and they're able to now draw from the nourishment from this feeder. If a bird flies up there, it has to sit on something and has to try to figure out how to get to it with his feet or his wings, it'll fall off. So this is why the hummingbird feeder is very unique, because the hummingbird, all he has to do is stick his beak into it, stay in one position, and now, ab now able to feed and get what it needs from the source. Watch this now. The reason it's able to do that, because when it gave up its flying ability like a normal bird, it acquired another ability. Birds fly like this, right? <laughs> right? They move like this or they dive, right? The hummingbird 
wings are like this, and they can move back and forth. Yeah. Like a figure eight doing this, right? Figure eight. Meaning that if it needs to hover, it can do this and stay in one spot. If it needs to turn backwards, it can turn backwards and still stay in one spot. If it needs to dive, it can dive and stay in one. Watch this now. Its ability is now able to be flexible in flight. How many of you are flexible in your faith walk? When you encounter something that challenges your faith, can you bend? Can you maneuver? Can you adapt and still stay in the same position of faith? Or does it knock you down and knocks you back and then you fall from grace? Watch the hummingbird, right? Can you figure eight with your faith walk? Can you stay suspended and never allow for your faith to be undermined by the winds of chaos, the winds of confusion, the winds of unforgiveness, the winds of brokenness, the winds of discouragement, the winds of life that knocks other people down. You're like the hummingbird. You can just figure eight. Is that where the wind going? I'm going to fly with the wind. Oh, you coming straight at me? I'm going to come a turn in midair and maneuver around you. Are y'all with me? Right. The hummingbird talking to us, right? So it adapts to its partner plant. It's able to now fly in a different way. And then third, what the hummingbird does and it teaches us is it's, it's able to now take the resources God has made available to it and use it responsibly to maintain its life and to continue the life of its children and its other offspring. Now watch this. The hummingbird has the ability, when they're born, when the mother hummingbird places their nest in a tree, they hatch two eggs simultaneously, always two eggs, and then this small little nest. And when the, the eggs hatch, the bird comes out, it's fluffy, doesn't look like a, a hummingbird, like a chicken or something, because the fur is all fluffy, right? You know, you ever seen a baby chick, right? It's fluffy, and it's full of fur. And it's a little fat bird. And the mother keeps feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. And then all of a sudden, the birds begin to grow. They get fatter and fatter. They got their baby weight on, right? They're getting fatter, right? And then all of a sudden, the two birds, now watch this now. The birds don't knock each other out of the nest. They grow together in the nest. Seek in a little bit. The birds, the babies, don't knock each other out of the nest. They continue to be fed by the same mother and they grow together in the nest. How many times in church when we have babes in Christ, newly born again believers, that somehow we become uh, a lot, we will allow the babies to knock other babies out of the community, to knock other babies out of the nest? Okay, are y'all with me? Or we allow ourselves to no longer be able to coexist with someone growing with us, and so we deny them their resources so we can have it all for ourselves. But these babies, they grow together, right? All right. So the gospel of the Hunterbird teaches us how to grow together. That when they get to the point where they're able to grow together, the reason they know that they're now ready to become their own independent hummingbirds is because they outgrow the nest together. So it's not until they reach the point where they've overgrown the nest that they realize they're able to now become independent. And a lot of times, we put the time factor on people's lives based on numbers and years, not based on their spiritual development. So it's not until you're able to overgrow the context of your life where God has you in that you know that this place doesn't fit anymore because it doesn't have the capacity to accept your growth and your expansion. Y'all with me? So when you're in a context and you're still dealing with life issues, we're talking about faith, right? And you're still dealing with a relationship, you're growing with somebody, and you're, you're still not able to master the relationship and learn how to grow together in a healthy way, that means you haven't overgrown that relationship. That means you still need to stay there and grow with the person until God calls you to a part of your growth process where you've overgrown that relationship. Well, how do I know I've overgrown the relationship? When it does not hurt you anymore to be offended. All right. When it does not hurt you anymore to be backbitten. Right. Some people embrace you at the same time and stab you in the back, right? Yeah, back, you yeah, ever heard some people like that? Right. Talk to you in your face and then go talk to you behind your, talk to someone else behind your back. Yeah. 
So until you overgrow, this is just an example, but overgrow the relationship in the sense of it doesn't bother you anymore that they said something against you. It doesn't bother you anymore that somehow you're not at the place where you want to be, but you're at the place where God has you. And when you get to that place, then God says, all right, you ready for the next level. He's done this. God has done this. She's done this. In ways in the Bible that lets us know that this is how faith looks. When Joseph overgrew his time in jail, God promoted him. When Moses overgrew his time with Pharaoh, God promoted him, right? When, um, when the prophet Samuel overgrew his time with Eli, God promoted him. When David overgrew his time with Saul, God promoted him. It is only in the times when we experience the, the, the intensity of growth that we experience God changing us and preparing us for the next level. So what happens now in the hummingbird's life and in our lives in this overgrowing process that lets us know God is ready for us to move to the next level? Watch this. The hummingbirds, after they grow out of the nest, then they find themselves coming outside the nest, and then evolution says to them, I must shed this extra fur because it's going to get stuck to that sugar. Right? I must shed this extra weight because I can't maneuver inside the plant and around the plant in my figure eights if I have this excess weight on me. So they become now, as they overgrow the nest and they become mature hummingbirds, they become leaner and they become faster, they become agile, and they shed the excess fur and weight that has been holding them in the nest. Right? They needed that first, but now they need to become lean. All right? This is how it helps us in our faith walk. As a babe in Christ, God gave you all the attention you need. Oh, so so and so need a prayer. Oh, so and so they don't understand the scriptures yet. Let's explain the story in the Bible. Oh, so and so need to be visited. Oh, so and so, and so you're a baby. So you got all this love from the church, right? All this attention, fatten you up, right? Getting you ready. Oh, I can trust this community. Oh, this is the place where God wants me to be. Oh, they just give me so much love, and I don't have to worry about anything. I know they're going to check on me. I know they're going to be faithful. They're going to feed me my scriptures when I need them, right? I don't have to worry about anything. Then all of a sudden, they say, so-and-so, what did God tell you you should do in this case? Oh, oh now I remember the scripture you told me last year. It applies now. You see what's happening? You're shedding the weight. Oh, you don't have to come see me. I'm okay, but I'd rather go see someone else who's sick. Amen. Oh, you don't have to come by my house and drop off food. I'll become a part of the kitchen ministry, and I'll volunteer to serve other people food. You see that? Shedding, right? You shed in Christianity. You shed in your spiritual life by losing your codependency on someone else to nurture your faith wall, to grow you spiritually. And now you're able to now grow with others independently and now feed others that now can rely on you to help them grow. Are y'all with me? That's how you become lean in Christ. Now, the agility, now watch this, the agility now of the bird and its ability to move in and out helps you in your faith walk now because as the birds now move to the next level of their lives, this is how they learn to survive in nature on their own. The hummingbird feeds every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes it has to eat. Its heartbeat, its heart, its heart beats 600 times every second. How many times your heart beat in a second? 600 times. Watch this now. Its wings, when you see it rotating its wings, it can do this 200 times in one second. It is burning all types of fuel, right? This is why it has to feed every 15 minutes. It's constantly burning food, I mean food that's eating every 15 minutes, right? So to survive, it has to sleep. So at night, it can't feed. So the hummingbird has the ability because it knows that it cannot survive without energy, <laughs> without food, but it also knows it can't survive without sleep or rest. It has the ability to drop its temperature 
about in half. So it goes from 105 degrees to about 50, 45, 50 degrees, almost thereabouts. It drops its temperature. Why? Because, it doesn't, because if it keeps going at that rate, it's going to burn up, right? It's going to die. So it drops its temperature. Guess what it does, too, at night? It fluffs up the feathers to keep it warm. So now the feathers come out and they fluff up like it was a bird, right? And then it stays warm and it's now cooling down its body temperature and it's getting warmer and it goes into a hibernation stage at night. Then when the morning comes, watch this now, oh, we're in scripture country now. When the morning comes, right? Then it wakes up, fluff feathers become lean again, smooths down to it, towards you know, its body and its temperature increased back up to 105, heartbeat, those, where the wind slow and steady, now increases to 600 times per second, right? Wings start flapping, and it takes off and starts back its process. Watch this in your faith walk. When you experience high stress, high um, difficulties in your life, you have to learn from the hummingbird how to back down, how to conserve, how to get back into your baby mode so you can now preserve your life. The reason Christians experience burnout is that they don't know how to stop when their lives and their spiritual walk is in danger of losing its momentum. Are y'all with me? So you have to learn how, like the hummingbird, to stop, to conserve, to slow down, to regenerate, so that now, when the morning comes, you can fly again into life. Amen. Are y'all with me? So the gospel according to the hummingbird, and this is just a preview, is one in which we learn from the hummingbird how to adapt to other relationships. We learn from the hummingbird how, in those relationships, we have to give up certain things that requires faith a faith that's not dependent on being firmly planted on anything except God. And then we learn that we have to conserve who we are as Christians in the times when we experience high stress, high difficulties, so that we can learn how to continue to grow beyond the circumstances when God is calling us to move from one growth period to the next. Are y'all with me? So the hummingbird teaches us the wisdom of God's creation, but also provides the wisdom for our faith walk. And if you want to be like the hummingbird, then you have to become lean, you have to become agile, you have to become fast, and you also have to become adaptable to the things that God has for us. Are y'all willing to follow the hummingbird's lead on this? All right. God bless you.